In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at distance versus displacement, things that you might encounter in a calculus class. We're going to look at it from a pictorial standpoint with the formulas, and then we'll work out an example of finding both the displacement and the distance. Okay, so let's suppose that we're dealing with the velocity function. So here is a velocity function v of t, and I'm considering this on the interval from a to b. All right, um, it's going to involve integration, and as you recall, when you integrate, you are finding the area under the curve because integration accumulates things. All right, and it is signed area. You don't want to forget that. So this section right in here, a sub one, would be a positive area, and the area under the curve here in a sub two would be a negative area because it's signed. All right, and then uh, the area under here, a sub three, that area would be positive again. Now, if I need to find the displacement from a to b, and I know the velocity function, all I have to do is integrate from a to b, a straight integration. That's going to automatically take care of things being positive and negative as you need it. So a sub 1 minus a sub 2 plus a sub 3. It's going to do it automatically. You could put this directly into your calculator and um, allow it to integrate that velocity function. Now, on the other hand, if you're trying to find the total distance on a to b, all right, then you're going to have to integrate the absolute value of that um, velocity function. And again, your calculator would do this automatically on its own, but you want to add all the total areas up, and since this is negative, all right, you're going to have to, you'd be subtracting negative, so you need to add it. Okay, um, we'll do both of these by hand, all right, doing this on a calculator is extremely simple because you put it in with those absolute value bars around that velocity function and it just takes care of it for you, all right, but I'm going to show you, we're going to work it out by hand, not using a calculator, so that you can see how to come up with that total distance when you're doing it by hand. All right, so let's take a look at a pretty straightforward, simple example here. Let's say we've got a particle is moving along a straight line so that its velocity is v of t equals t squared plus 3t minus t minus 10 feet per second, okay? So we'll have a part A that says what's the displacement of the particle from 0 to 6, or on that interval from 0 to 6, and then part B, what is the total distance traveled during that time from 0 to 6. All right, so displacement is a straightforward integration of that velocity function. All right, so we would set up the integral as the integral on the interval from 0 to 6, so from 0 to 6 of t squared plus 3t minus 10 dt. Okay, so that would be a straight integration. At this point, if you're dealing with distance and, and um, total distance and displacement, I'm assuming that you are really good with your definite integrals. We'll work this one out because it's really short, and we will not work as many out on the second part. Um, so integrating right there, I would have a 1 third t to the third plus integrating here I would have a 3 halves t squared and then minus 10 t and then we would need to evaluate that on the interval from 0 to 6. So here I would have a 1 third times 6 to the third plus a 3 halves times 6 squared minus 60 and then minus 0 because when you plug in 0 and all of those you would just get zero. All right, now that's just straight arithmetic. If you need to pause the video to see if you can come up with a 66, that would work. All right, but basically I have a 66 here. It is a positive number. So I can conclude, therefore, the particle moved 66 feet because it was feet per second. And then it's positive, so we're going to say 2 the right, all right, because it did say it's moving along a straight line, so I'm assuming left to right here, all right, it's a positive 66, it moved to the right. If it was a negative 66, it would have moved to the left, it would have been backwards, okay. All right, um, now for part B, what's the total distance traveled during the interval from 0 to 6? All right, now if we recall and go back to our picture here, okay, there could be sections of the velocity function that are negative or below the x-axis. Might not be, but could be. So I need to find what, in, in the interval from 0 to 6, I need to find where is it positive and where is it ne it's negative. So if I'm doing this by hand, the first thing I've got to do then is determine where it's above and below the x-axis. So I'm going to do that by um, a number line. So I'm going to take my t squared 
plus 3t minus 10. I'm going to set it equal to 0 because um, hopefully this is going to factor really nicely. All right, I'm going to have a t and a t. All right, and that will be a minus 2 and a plus 5. That's going to give me a negative 10 there. That'll give me a 3 in the middle. All right, this one right here is t equals 2. This one right here is t equals negative 5. Okay, well, t equals negative 5 is not in my interval, so I don't need to deal with this. All right, so from 0 to 6, all right, at 2... I'll try to make it a little bit thing there. Now I'm just going to use a little number line here um, for v of t and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to see where it's positive and where it's negative. All right, you plug in, if I plug in, let's say I plug in a 1 here, 1 plus 3 minus 10. All right, so it's going to be negative here. If I plug in, I don't know, let's say a 5, 25 plus 15 minus 10, then it's going to be positive here. Okay, so... I know that from 0 to 2, oops, missed that. From 0 to 2, all right, it's negative. From 2 to 6 on that interval, it's going to be positive, okay? All right, so now that means when I integrate, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2, and I'm going to need to take the absolute value of that because I need the positive area here. And then I will integrate like normal from 2 to 6. All right, so I would set up, let's switch to a different color so it kind of stands out here. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2, and I'm going to take the absolute value of t squared plus 3t minus 10 dt. All right, and then I will add to that the integral from 2 to 6 of t squared plus 3t minus 10 dt. Let's go ahead and put parentheses around that. All right, but this section right here, because I've discovered that that's where my negative section is, I need this to be a positive value so that I'm adding up that total distance there. Okay, now here again, um, we've already, you know, I'm, I'm not going to work out the integration. It's going to take up a lot of room. I'm not going to have a lot of space here. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do the integration. All right. Basically, <clears throat> you will integrate this like normal. And then when you get done, you need to make sure that you take the absolute value of it. All right. And I believe this one should turn out to be a 34 over 3. All right. Plus, when you integrate on this one, then I'm pretty sure you get a 232 over 3. All right, so definitely pause the video, see if you can go through that integration like that. All right, the setup here is the main thing on this. All right, when doing this by hand, that gives you then a total area of 266 over 3, and if you did it as a decimal, you'd get like 88.667, roughly. Okay, so that's the dis difference between your displacement and your total distance. Displacement, you integrate that velocity function like normal, and you're going to be fine. On total distance, and you're doing it by hand without a calculator, you've got to figure out where that curve is negative, where it's positive. Okay, the easiest way to do that is just run a little number line there and find out where it is positive and negative. All right, set it equal to zero, factor it, all right, get some intervals in there to look at, and then check those intervals. Any interval that is negative, you've got to take the absolute value bar of that interval. So from 0 to 2, I've got to take the absolute value of that, so then I need the positive answer. All right, and then if it's already positive, I'm going to integrate like normal right there. So um, definitely thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.